So here to give a little bit more witness is uh, someone who wrote the very first chapter of the book, our dear friend Stuart Timmons, who's one of our eminent historians in our community and as I think everyone here knows, suffered a catastrophic stroke three years ago. But um, he's here and wants to say a few words to you and then we're going to have Richard Neely, who's the associate editor of the book, read a short section from Stuart's chapter. Stuart? Hello everyone, thank you all for coming out today and I hope you integrate this book that is really all I have to say. Have a good time reading our history. Thank you. I could say these were my own words, but these are Stuart's <coughs> words. In the fairy circle, each man's story matched down to the subtlest details. The green meadows, the blue sky, and their very bodies seemed to glow as each shared early memories of feeling different. They had always been called sissies, but they always knew that they were somehow strong. And however many years that they had been out of the closet, succeeding in business, in organizing, or in the bars, they felt that until they found the fairies, something had been missing. A carved talisman was passed around the circle, and where it stopped, the group's undivided attention focused. A delicate black man wearing only a sparkling scarf and hiking boots took the talisman into the circle and while walking slowly addressed the ring of 200. We fairies need to stop saying, my consciousness is better than your consciousness. That's heterosexist. No one person, no one group, no one ideology has the answer. You need a spirit. It was the search for such a spirit that had led them all there, including Harry Hay. A short time after he'd gone into retirement, he was out again. It was part of the circle. In fact, he'd worked hard to call them into being. But privately, he regarded the radical fairies, as this new phenomenon of gay identity came to be known, to be a flowering of the circle of loving companions, a joint quest for an adhesive gay comradeship. The radical fairies responded to the emptiness of both the straight establishment and assimilated gay society. Those who flocked to the fairy gatherings had found little distinction between the two. To them, both were oppressive, shallow, and mired in such macho value as male competitiveness and dominance. Don Kilhefner, who with Harry helped create the fairies, wrote that gay activism has given us a little breathing space from the stifling decades of oppression. It was the aim of the fairies to find out what could grow in that new atmosphere. The spirit seemed to flow through the circle. A heavy-set, gray-haired man wearing a floppy hat stepped into its midst and told of his career as a lawyer. I deal every day with people who fight each other, and they're all he-men, policemen who abuse power, judges, and because I am a fairy, I feel great pain in that world. He struggled momentarily with his emotion and continued, all of those people are he-men. I come to the fellow fairies because I need the love that I get here. And so many times in the gay world, I do not get that. I get the same kind of alienation that I get in the world of he-men. 
A young, hardened street person from San Diego spoke. A long strand of bells stretched from his neck to his left sandal strap, tinkled in the still mountain air when he walked. He offered the circle a verse from Jean Genet. Fairies are a pale and motley race that flowers in the minds of decent folk. Never will they be entitled to broad daylight, to real sun. But remote in these limbos, they cause curious disasters which are harbingers of new beauty. The crowd whooped and applauded. A voice called out, Right out, Madame Genet! <laughs> when the circle closed, the men came together, arm in arm, body to body, and a deep ohm began to sound, vibrating through the huddle of men, each more completely a living part of the circle. Male voices rose in humming harmony, and the sound gained momentum like dozens of fingers on wine glasses. As they dispersed, flute music played as if from a sylvan soundtrack. Voices accompanying it sang, Dear friends, queer friends, let me tell you how I'm feeling. You have given me such pleasure. I love you so. Thank you. Before we go on, I, I want to just pay a quick personal tribute to Richard Neely, because without Richard's wonderful help, this book would not have been possible. Just to manage 50 writers from every part of the world, he's been a wonderful person to work with, along with our other associate editor, Bo Young, who's in New York today, but sends his best wishes. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you.